fractals, and I would like to expand the idea of fractals often done before to three dimensions because I'm very much interested in architecture. And you will see what my problems are in trying to do so. First, we have to clarify what fractals are about. They are about iteration, self-similarity, and scaling. And my questioning are which phenomena in nature, technology, and design show these principles, so to derive, to get inspiration from. How strict can these principles be applied? That's the difficulties we have to deal with, and how can the principles be systematized? That's systematized. That's um, the next question, and it's an open field. First, this familiar picture of the cop curve shows what uh, fractals are basically about. We've got this initiator and the generator, and we can take out a third of this line and set two pieces inside, and we can iterate, um, do that, and finally we get the cock curve, and finally, finally means in infinity, and that's one of the problems we are dealing with in infinity that can never be found in nature or in architecture. On the right side, there is another problem shown with the analogies we are dealing with. There are three cock curves arranged to a cock snowflake, and looking on architecture in comparison to fractal geometry, we do not only have this problem on the left side with the infinity, but also with a, I say, blurred vision on this theme. You can say this is a snowflake, but if you compare it to phot photographs of a snowflake, you see there's not very much simi similarity. In fact, you can also say this looks like a coastline, so why shouldn't we call it the snow? Uh, the Kong Island. So, could be anything. It's just our fantasy connecting both parts. And that's why a lot of people think that the Pont du Gal in France is kind of a fractal image. And um, I don't think so, in a way. But you can try to make it a better fractal than it is in reality. So I took a photograph of the Pont du Gard and added a rendering that's more like a fractal. And now you may decide which is the real Pont du Gard and which is the wrong one. <laughs> so did the Romans write or didn't they? So on the just to bring this to an end, the left one is the real building, and the right one is the try to make a fractal out of it, and you can imagine this could be done a lot of times more. Here's another fractal, it's on the 5 euro bill, and the bill, of course, refers to the Pont but it's not quite the Pont just to not get the different people in Europe arguing about where this uh, bill comes from. <coughs> uh, the sort of one we got. So I think meta real. Now I try to get away from these uh, primarily images of fractals into three dimensions. And the funny thing about it is in recent books about fractals, you could find pictures like this about three-dimensional fractals. The two-dimensional fractals are always presented very well. There are good pictures in the older books, but the three-dimensional are rarely um, adequate presentations. So you need a lot of fantasy to find out what is happening here. 
and you can see in the first iteration of the tetradon inside of the cube, you will find the, the star that you see in this Escher picture right here. If you go on to do this, so here is the stellar octangular we just saw. And if you go on doing this, you find something like this waffle. And finally, if you get to infinity, it's a cube again. So better stop before getting to infinity, because it's getting boring. <laughs> and um, those things are done with 3D printer. And here another amazing fantasy striking picture of the Zeitler Zeitler book and I really could not imagine what would happen. I always thought, okay, it might be a long and that will be filled by this kind of um, fractal, but it doesn't. And when I did the renderings, I saw something like that, might be a Indian fractal or something similar. It's in a way connected to Casimir Malevich's architectons. But I can tell only when I did the uh, model of this with a 3D printer, I really understood what I got. So the um, step from the image in the computer to the three-dimensional <coughs> object I can turn in my hand really made a difference. And only then I saw all the nice properties that I did. So here's another one, a cough curve with a hexagon and no uh, hexagon. And I try to <coughs> show you the analog in three-dimensional space from here to there. It's again filling the cube, but with nice uh, parts inside here. And stuff in the sections that is pretty much new compared to the tetraedron. And here you see the Zierpinski carpet and the Menga sponge corresponding. And this, as an architect, um, inspires me most because it looks like an um, architecture from the uh, architect of Germany, Oswald Matthias Unger, he's called the working model. So I also tried something on the Sipinski part in the with this roof image. You see, for me, it's not interesting to stay in the, in the spanner view, but to <coughs> try to um, bend it or distort it in a way, but still keeping the properties of it. That's not real, it's just to just make it up for this presentation. But here's a real building by Stephen Hall, the Simmons Hall in Boston. But you see what, what uh, fractals become when you get into the architecture. They are finally only a building with windows. But it's a sort of an interesting building because this idea of a sponge with bigger holes and smaller holes is um, built into this building. And the connection to fractal geometry is not only by the form, but also by the concept. And that is another thing I'm interested in. I want to know if the designer thought about fractal ideas, but must, must not be in the fractal geometry but fractal ideas like getting light and air into the building and having a big surface to get an interchange with the surroundings. So this is a good example for fractals in architecture. Here just to, to have a small pause and an artistic drawing also in fractal idea to follow with a pen. This is a lot of work to do if you don't have a computer, if you're doing all that with a pen. That really hurts. <laughs> Another piece of 
geometry that made it into architecture. This is the pinwheel tiling. Here, filled as a fractal by leaving out some of those triangles. So the tiling, very, <coughs> very interesting properties, like those triangles could have any orientation inside of this um, tiling. You know, a domino tiling is, has got two directions, and the Penrose tiling has ten directions. And this is have an infinite set of directions. <coughs> and that's why it uh, made it into this facade of Melbourne Federation Square. And the fractal idea helped a lot to get this built because you have only one um, part, one module, you have to arrange in different positions with different materials, and then you get this facade out of it. But still, this is only two-dimensional. You know, we are dealing with architecture, but you know, two-dimensional. Here's another <coughs> thing I want to mention about the scaling. In architecture, you can often find self-similarities that are only in two scales. So you might better talk about mother and child situation or house in a house situation, but rarely a real fractal is occurring. So here is why. It is because the part our city planners and architects can uh, span with their ideas and, and designs is only dealing with a small part of our universe and a small part of um, steps in scale, like from city to the room, there are only one to three countable, less steps, not enough to get infinity for a fractal. Mm -hmm. So this might also occur in traffic routes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I put this right. Highway might be something like an interstate road, so um, it should be a hierarchy of um, traffic routes leading from a highway to a room like a branching system in your body. And this is what scaling could be in the vision of an architect. You have one house, and this house is, again, made of houses. Thinking about traffic routes might be uh, more sufficient. So, uh, I'm very interested in those pictures and those ideas, like by Khan or this Chicago picture. This subdivision algorithm is fractal, and I'm carrying, as we say in German, um, I'm carrying something to you already know from your daily life. You've got a very big country, and you have it had to subdivide it to get orientation inside of this country. You had a square system, you're squaring the squares all the time until you get down to your own house. That's uh, what the fractal idea of uh, planning is all about in this huge country. So finally, when you get from the squares of the roads to the squares or rectangles in your shop, you've still got orientation. The medieval towns of Europe are quite different, and so the idea of Le Corbusier to get those structures or those principles of subdivision into the, the modern towns was like this proposal for Paris, La Vigne Radius, and it's a fractal idea of having a hierarchy of street levels for cars, pedestrians, and to get all <coughs> the simple houses get connected to every other level. Hopefully, <coughs> this will never be built, but um, the idea is clear. You have a very 
big surface by fractal like this. So this is not done by fractal in a geometry way, but by thinking about fractal structures in in function and in concept. I did another proposal, and um, this is very German, <laughs> like a Chinese thing. And I took this uh, horrible uh, image for an architect, for modern architect, a horrible image of the design, just to make sure you don't take it for architecture. <laughs> it's just a fractal. You see a house with a yard, and the houses with the yards are arranged around of this uh, bigger yard, and around that are streets, and those blocks are formed blocks that surround the mark. <laughs> and this might look familiar to you in a way. You can find the structure of a huge part and small parts inside in Manhattan, but you've only got two levels of subdivision. Let's talk about structure. Here's a, an arm. You've got one bone, two bones, then it's <coughs> subdivided again. The thumb is too much, you know, take the thumb away. Useless for this, but not <laughs> 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 useless for the daily life. And here another system of subdivision in this Conrad Waxman drawing. It's like most of the houses in Northern America are built. Mandelbrot already figured out that the Eiffel Tower is kind of a fractal curve with a lot of knots, very much knots, and the supports are subdivided by girders and again by truss girders. And so you've got a three steps of subdivision. Here in those pictures from Berlin, this is the Spree and this is the handrail of the Spree. This is just one of the traffic bridges <coughs> with a subdivision here to minimize the loads of dynamic um, weight. And this one is the famous Mies van der Rohe Neue National Gallery, New National Gallery, with this squared group that is subdivided into squares and inside of those are square grids again. So I tried to find out what kind of irregular structure could be made by real geometry, geometric approach. And I thought about the paper format of the Deutsche Industrie norm. German industry norm. Uh, it's done with the proportion one to square root. So you can easily on a copy machine get the double of the area or half of the area. You might appreciate that if you're dealing with the legal uh, format or the other format. So that's very easy to scale and that's why I can use the scaling system inside of that like a, like a plan. I just have a picture here. You can see if you are dealing with with the sub subdivision, you can also choose three, then the proportions are getting different, or four, then that's proportion of two. Here, one and one. There, and it's uh, obvious. Come on, stop too right again. So, this is the, the idea. Those are too many, but some missing. That's the idea of this algorithm that created uh, this form I brought with me. So, it's a good structure you can go on with until you've got a table, until it's dense enough for a table.
But uh, I'll try to find out what is three-dimensional about it. This is still only a two-dimensional idea. And in the next step, I try to find out how I can make it real three-dimensional. I take this basic form here, this container, I call it. And then I have to flip it around in the upper position. And if I flip it around, it's limited to the scaling I apply. So if I take the, I have to see from, from, when I take this one for one, number one, this one has to be bigger, and that one has to be shorter in scaling, <coughs> and has to be shorter and bigger in this proportions. So you get a module for container fractal, and this flipping and turning I wanted to show with this tube element and the colors in it. The next picture should show how the turning is going on. You got black down here, and then black is on the right or on the left. And all those things have to be turned, and the connections have to be designed very uh, complex to get those things connected. If you're not only doing containers. Here's another try to get a fractal into um, into a three-dimensional form. Again, this is not architecture. I want to point out. We are talking about the Cantor set, and if we're doing this in two dimensions, we've got the Cantor dust. And if I take the Cantor dust for horizontal sections in this structure, you see four squares here, and here are 16 squares already. I don't know how many are here are and so on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you may know. <laughs> and um, this is a thing I call castle for obvious reasons. <laughs> and when we're talking about architecture, it's often um, put into a surrounding with green, and so I think I may talk about green as well. Those are fractals that remind us of uh, branching systems. Here's another one I did with the 3D printer and some experiments with the same algorithm that are also inspiring me with uh, movies like Star Trek <coughs> here on the right. <coughs> and this is what an artist did in this direction with cutter I don't know if he had was what was inside of this box, but he did a nice job on cutting it. Do uh, you want to see it again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's crazy. Isn't he? yeah. But let's uh, come to my last example. This is the town hall of Osnabrück in Lower Saxonia. It's one of the locations where the end of the Thirty Years' War <coughs> was set by signing a treaty. And the room where the treaty was signed is here. <coughs> and I'm sometimes in Osnabrück and I'm always stunned by this mm -hmm. window because it's fractal in perfection. Those, um, this transom it's a little bit bigger than here. So it's all perfect. And I was inspired and thought I might take it and make a house out of this fractal. And then I came up with this design. Yeah. You see, there are a lot of steps, integration steps. And <coughs> also by changing the material from step to step. So thank you very much.
when you have the uh, color scattering too. Yeah. Do you have those colors, those colored ends? Yes. Yeah. Um, Pipes with a negative Gaussian curvature. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful negative. <laughs> yeah. Um, I tried this. Um, do you have a do you have a shot of that or not? I'm sorry, I don't have. It. Um, there's probably some practicality in this for heat or uh, fluid exchange. Those you will not see any heat in the line. Something like okay. That. Yeah, I should mention it. Um, there's uh, a lot of work to do to get them fixed, yeah. uh, fitting to the next uh, step. You know, it's not easy. Um, may not be uh, done already perfectly. So, what's funny is the container here got the same size of those two containers, and the same size of those four, mm -hmm. and so on. You're always um, getting the same size. That's what makes the difference to the form, to the other shown here. Mm -hmm. Here the complete fractal Self-similarity is only guaranteed by scaling the whole down. So it's got an upper limit like a table. The other is really self-similarity with fitting into the original box. Yeah. Can you say more about this tension between the sticking with the the mathematics of the of the fractal versus uh, an aesthetic sense that you bring to it and say, I'm going to take a liberty at this point, like that architect on the MIT dorm, where he got sort of arbitrarily punched some holes in, in his building, whereas your building from that last slide was very, you obeyed the fractal nature of your design more than he did. How do you, as an architect, wage that battle in your head, you know? Yeah, as long as I'm not designing for real buildings <laughs> in those pictures. Uh, it's the luck that I can uh, operate with things that are obviously uh, complicated for real architecture. So, um, but this is um, a challenge you should keep in mind. With, with doing architecture, you can't let your buildings only Obey to uh, geometry, you have to get function in it and uh, material, you have to think about material and all that. So the rendering could do fine, but you want to do architect architecture to um, be useful, you have to compromise. So I'm oh, sorry, I can't. Uh, talk as liberally as I want to about this uh, topic because my English is so <laughs> um, I think that the real interesting stuff about the yeah, our, blur our blurred view or our blurred vision on this topic, fractal and architecture, and the possibilities on the other side. I want to find out, are there any other possibilities? What else can we try? can be um, get out of this topic. I think it's not yet done. And a lot of people just say, okay, no, it's not suitable because of this infinity problem and so on, and keep away. But I want to find out if there's something more. What's the relationship between the increase in the surface and the three-dimensional Between the surface and the space, you know the space, the outside space. Yep. So let's take the manga sponge. Yeah. If you're doing the manga sponge, at the end you will have an endless surface area, mm -hmm. but no space left. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good property for architecture. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no, no space left to fill. Left to fill. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's no volume, no material left. Yeah. So there's nothing 
to construct this. So it's not constant. You, you're, you're gradually filling in. Uh, even though you have smaller, many more spaces, yeah. but they're smaller and smaller. And the net result of that is you're, you're filling in.